space travel, has continued as an extremely competitive race since the first day Sputnik was launched. Countries push the boundaries of their technologies in every mission, to demonstrate how advanced they are, how skilled and intelligent their people are. China, has managed to surpass Russia in the race that started between the United States and the Soviet Union. While the competition between countries continues, there are also countries that are not so interested in the race, but are steadily advancing in space research. Among these, the most successful country is India, which doesn't shy away from carrying its satellites by bicycles or carts. Welcome to Spaceship Earth. In this video, we will talk about the history of the Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO, and their successful work strategies. When India decided to start its space program in 1969, it entered a world dominated by the rivalry of two giants, the United States and the Soviet Union. America and Russia were there to showcase their power in space. They were investing all their financial and technical capabilities for this. However, India neither had the desire to display such power, nor the means to do so. During a time when NASA's annual budget was $40 billion, ISRO's annual budget was only about $1 billion. Therefore, they had to act wisely to make an impact in the space race and the spacefaring club. Due to its limited budget and resources, the Indian Space Research Organization focused on using the space program to address the country's various needs from the very beginning. During that period, India almost lacked reliable communication, and accurate weather forecasting required for agriculture, and industry. This deficiency was a significant problem for an agriculture-based nation. As a result, India started producing and launching communication, and meteorology satellites to improve the agricultural industry, during the first decade of its space program. Of course, the produced satellites, and the rockets that launched them were not as capable as the systems produced by the United States or the Soviets. India's early days in the space program were, extremely modest. Rocket parts were often transported between facilities on bicycles, and larger systems like satellites were transported by carts pulled by oxen, covered with nylon. India sent its first satellites into space in partnership with the Soviet Union in exchange for allowing to Soviets to use Indian ports. However, they continued to work on a domestically designed orbit-capable rocket for their main goal. Following these efforts, in 1980, India successfully launched its first indigenous-designed and produced SLV rocket. This rocket, which had four stages, and used solid fuel engines, weighed 17 tons and could launch a 40-kg satellite into low Earth orbit. Although the SLV could reach orbit, it couldn't meet their needs. Therefore, they attached two strap-on boosters to the first stage of the SLV, and developed an improved version, known as the ASLV. However, this model wasn't very successful. It was both still underpowered and suffered frequent launch failures. As a result, the project was terminated in 1994. To meet increasing demands, the ISRO started developing a much larger, and more capable PSLV rocket. The PSLV, Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle, successfully launched its first mission in 1993, and has since become one of India's most frequently used rockets. With various sizes and payload capacities, this rocket can deliver payloads up to 3.8 tons to low Earth orbit. PSLV has been the backbone of India's space efforts, and conducted many commercial launches, totaling 55 successful missions out of 58. Similar to all rockets designed by ISRO, PSLV makes extensive use of solid-fueled boosters. Solid-fueled rockets are preferred by the organization, due to their reliability, and cost-effectiveness. While the solid-fueled rocket successfully takes off, it doesn't have much steering capability on its own. To achieve this, they are using a different method. Inside the two, long devices that resemble external boosters on the sides of the rocket, there is a powerful oxidizer called, strontium perchlorate. This chemical is injected through valves, placed in the rocket's nozzle. This allows the rocket to change direction by altering the reaction rates. Due to its reliability and success, PSLV was used in India's first Mars and Moon missions. However, to meet current demands, to send communication and meteorology satellites to geostationary orbit, they needed a larger rocket. This led to the development of the GSLV. GSLV is a rocket design based on India's pragmatic approach to space technology. It builds upon the existing system and enhanced. 4. Liquid-fueled strap-on boosters are attached to support, at the central solid-fueled core engine. However, unlike other rockets, these boosters don't detach, once their task is completed. The central core engine burns out earlier in the flight. Until the separation of the upper stages, the boosters assist in propulsion. While practical, this method is not very efficient, 
which prompted a transition to the LVM vehicle. During liftoff, to lift the entire system, LVM uses one of the most powerful solid-fueled engines on Earth, attached with the central hypergolic stage. The central stage does not ignite during liftoff, it ignites just before the solid boosters complete their burn, and detach. After reaching space, a stage fueled with liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen, send the payload to geostationary orbit or beyond. LVM rocket has a payload capacity of 10 tons to low Earth orbit, and 4 tons to geostationary orbit. With this capacity, they were able to launch the Chandrayaan lunar mission or, in the coming year, plan to launch the Gaganyaan crewed space vehicle. Currently, the LVM is India's most powerful orbital-capable rocket. It's relied upon for missions like Chandrayaan-3, or future crewed missions. In the upcoming years, they are also working on, developing reusable rockets that can return back and land, after the mission. So, how does India with a budget one-tenth of NASA's, manage to produce so many rockets, and successfully reach to Mars and the Moon? The key to their success is the realistic use of their budget, and capabilities through a well-thought-out program. India has a large population. While the overall quality of life may not be high, thanks to the educational capabilities, and English proficiency left over from colonial years, they have access to more capable and skilled personnel than any other countries. Furthermore, they can accommodate these well-educated personnel at a much lower cost, compared to other countries. A similar approach can be seen in the designs of their rockets and satellites. When their space program started, they used their solid-fueled rocket technology, developed for military purposes. This was an effective and economical method. For more advanced rocket designs, they started with simple liquid-fueled engines, and transitioned to more complex, but powerful engines. India also followed a realistic plan in selecting projects to work on. Instead of immediately competing with other countries in the space race, they focused on solving basic needs such as communication and ground observation services. While achieving these goals, they developed their capabilities in spacecraft design and production. As a result, in 2013, with a budget lower than a sci-fi movie, India became the fourth country to reach Mars orbit on its first attempt. Meanwhile, they designed their spacecrafts to only fulfill mission requirements and parameters. When NASA sends a rover to Mars, it often operates well beyond its planned mission duration. This is because their vehicles are designed that way. In contrast, ISRO designs their spacecraft to last as long as the mission's duration requires. This makes their projects more cost-effective. By using this approach, India aims to become the fourth country to send humans to space, using their own rocket and spacecraft in the coming years. The Gaganyaan program plans to conduct unmanned tests in 2024, followed by the first crewed mission in 2025 if all goes well. Through its modest but ambitious steps, India, from its early days of transporting rocket and satellite parts on bicycles and carts, has proven that access to space can be achieved without the huge budgets and resources of NASA, showcasing significant achievements. Thank you for watching Spaceship Earth. If you found our video informative, please like and share it. Subscribe to follow our videos on space and space technology.